Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Supergirl Season 5, Episode 14. We're going to be doing my review and breakdown for the episode. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was very good. I liked it a lot. I think there was some stuff that I didn't really agree with or I didn't like. So that's bound to happen, but I thought overall it was pretty good. I thought the bodyguard stuff was probably the least interesting thing about the episode. And there was some very good stuff with some other people and some other storylines. However, as usual, leave your opinions in the comments down below. What do you think of this episode and the stuff that goes on? And especially I want you guys to clarify your thoughts on like the ending of the episode. I'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, so we start this episode off episode 14 at this obsidian event we have this sort of cute scene with everyone alex is there kelly turns up she's got like some dumplings she's got some food for alex as a treat and then there was a really great moment with kara and dumplings i just thought i would mention that because that was very good and i appreciate that scene anyway so then we've got kara and william so william shows up just after that and I found it to be really funny, as in his sentence when he was giving Kara her like specially made coffee, I don't know what was in it, apart from one thing, he said caramel, and at first I was like, caramel what? And then obviously I was like, oh shit, it's caramel, but still, is that like a little jab? Is that like a little thing that the writers put in there, just to remind us on purpose? I don't know, it feels like it is, it was a funny moment, I was like, oh shit. For a second but anyway who cares let's move on so basically what is happening throughout this episode and we'll skip right to the ending and everything that happens with Kara and William this episode because I feel like that's what everyone wants to talk about that's the big thing I want to talk about as well because at the start of the episode they make it very very clear that Kara does have some sort of feelings for William and she obviously made that decision a few episodes ago before the hundredth episode where she denied going on a date with him and so due to that she's been sort of feeling bad and everything like that and they've basically been trying to convince Kara to go on this date with William because it seems clear that the writers and you know the showrunners do want them to be together and it seems like that's what they're trying to do obviously I find it a little bit weird at the moment only due to the fact that in real life Melissa is pregnant and she's obviously played the role in this way before with Monel. obviously in real life Chris and Melissa are together they are going to be parents which is incredible and they are married in real life so I'm still a bit weirded out by the idea that Kara could be with someone else only due to the fact that they were together on the TV show and then like the actors obviously you have to separate Mono and Kara from Melissa and Chris because they're completely different people from their characters however I still find it a little bit hard at the moment because it's so fresh the news that she's pregnant and then they just got married like a few months ago and everything like that and also they used to be together on the show so I'm like eh, yeah I'm not sure but we'll have to wait and see I'm not like a huge fan of this, but at the same time, I'm actually not very opposed to it. I'm not like, oh, she can't be with anyone else. Like, Kara can be happy, and Kara could be with anyone, but I just didn't see that relationship, that sort of chemistry build, like it did with Monel in the past or anything like that. And obviously, that chemistry led off screen with the actors because they're now married, they're gonna have a kid, but. It just hasn't felt like there's been that much chemistry between them. I mean, it's not like the worst pairing in the world that you could think of. But yeah, I'm a bit unsure as to those two together at the moment, but I'm definitely open to it. And so later in the episode, we have William. He's been obviously set up to be in a situation where he's talking to Supergirl about Kara because, you know, this is the way that leads towards the end of the episode. So it's all been plotted out so that you get that talk at the start. Kara's reminded, oh, maybe I do like William. And then in the middle, you have Kara actually not being there, but being there as Supergirl, talking to William. And William is talking about his co worker, aka Kara, towards Supergirl, obviously thinking, oh, you know, you're not Kara or anything like that. So that way, you've got the open dialogue of his feelings for Kara, and then she sort of opens up more to this. And so you have that happening whilst all this other stuff is going on. And then towards the end of the episode, you have Kara and Alex, they are on the sofa. 
um, William texts and Alex obviously reacts to it because it seems like Alex is really, really kind of rooting for Kara to be with William. So she reacts to this text. She's like, oh, you just got a text from William or something like that. And so basically Kara talks about like the stuff that happened in the episode and we'll get to this stuff in a minute in the review. She talks about like the VR stuff and how she's sort of texting rather than saying anything in real life. They say how that's sort of like a problem, how, you know, you should do it in real life. I don't think that's such a big problem. I know they didn't make a big deal of it, but I felt like the texting stuff is just kind of natural in real life. So maybe it takes away from some of the reality if they are forcing them just to do it in real life. Obviously, lots of people do it in real life, but a lot of people do text and stuff like that before they actually get into any sort of dates type situation in real life. But anyway, so yeah, by the end of the episode, she goes to Catco, she talks to William, and she says, I would like to go out with you, essentially, and so that's going to lead into next episode. They're going to have dinner, as Kara said, and so we'll have to wait and see where that goes from here on out. Like I said, obviously Caramel is the best, and nothing will take away from that. However, I'm not opposed to this, although I don't feel that same chemistry that I felt before the very first time that Monel even sort of slightly suggested anything about, you know, liking Kara or Kara suggested about liking Monel in any way. There was that chemistry since the start. So maybe this is just like a late sort of blooming chemistry that is going to happen in this potential relationship. So yeah, let's move on to talk about the other stuff in this episode. So you have the elevator screwing up at Obsidian. Andrea nearly dies. Supergirl saves her. The CGI in this episode was alright, there was some good stuff, there was some kind of shabby stuff, but who cares, you know, the show's budget is really not very good compared to the ambition that they tried to do. So you have Lena still going on and on and on and on about Nonna Cherry. This has been happening since episode one of the season and nothing is happening. And this episode was the first time that something happened. So she talks about like how her and her friends in relation to talking about Kara, she goes, her and her friends think I'm going down a dark path, blah blah blah, she keeps on talking about how like Supergirl's friends and everything like that, and it's still weird, because yeah, she's separated from them, and she's going down this sort of dark path, obviously she doesn't believe it, but I still think she's teetering on, on that dark path, definitely. She's talking about them as if she was like, never friends with them, and I think that's a problem that goes down to the writing, to be honest, because I think it's badly worded. However, you know, at least something happened in this episode to do with Lena, because, like, the last, like, God knows how many weeks, this little storyline with Nonna, Cherry, and Lena just pops up for, like, five minutes in the episode, then it goes away, comes back next episode, they try and do some more tests, whatever. And today, in this episode, they actually did something, they went out to this prison, he had some dude called Steve, I believe we've seen him before, I kind of recognised him. He has a seizure over, you know, Nonna Cherry working, and so basically she didn't account to some sort of, like, other way of thinking in the head, rather than just, like, violent tendencies or, like, bad tendencies. She sees what she's done, she changes it, and then she helps this guy out, and this guy sort of thanks him, says she's like a superhero or something like that, and... All at the same time you have Brainy working with Lex, they're still working on trying to get into Leviathan and by the end of the episode the ending scene had Lex get into a car with that Leviathan lady who works at Obsidian and he's going to eventually meet Leviathan if he sort of holds up his end of the deal. So that's all really great, obviously I think that they're dragging along the Leviathan stuff a bit too long because I don't think they're that interesting that we can drag them on for this long, because really, you had some stuff towards the end of the first half of the season, then you've had nothing to do with it, basically, in the back half, apart from a few things with Lex and Brainy trying to do this, but, like, it hasn't actually gone through with anything really yet. And so, whilst you have all of this, you have the sort of fake Star Sapphire, and... Yeah, she was actually kind of intriguing, like, I liked her, she was very interesting, even though I felt the way they ended was kind of cliche, one second to go, blah blah blah, I didn't really like that bit, but I thought the mystery of her was good throughout the episode, and I thought her motivation was true, and I had to question something, I was like, 
kind of rooting for her in the end. I know you're supposed to like half root with her, half sort of have an alliance with her, but I didn't see what was so bad about what she was doing, apart from obviously they drop a line towards the end of the episode where they were like, oh, someone could die from this, but it seemed like she was just trying to like shut it down. So I was a bit confused as to like the motivation behind everyone stopping her. Obviously, apart from the fact that she was trying to kill Andrea earlier in the episode, that means she's bad, right? But anyway, so also there is another point that I wanted to question in this episode because Alex has this story where she's sort of grappling about like leaving the DEO and everything. But I thought it was a very weird thing that Alex is sort of grappling about her situation about having no gun on her side. And it's funny at first, it is funny, but also it's strange because politically, and you know, what they've done on the show before, you know, to do with gun violence, they took away guns at the EEO and stuff like that. And now they're talking about Alex like being desperate to have a gun at her side. I thought that was like a definite error in the writing because that is very much so against the sort of rules and ideas that Supergirl has set up about guns in the past. And so she was like, oh no, I don't have a gun, blah, blah, blah. Like, I love Alex, but I didn't agree with how she was written in this episode. I felt like this was a bit out of character. But anyway, so yeah, that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new. So I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.